Good morning, I'm Mark Allen with Gaper.io and I'm here today with JP Richardson, the CEO of Exodus. Good afternoon in your case, JP, how you doing? Doing well, Mark, thanks for having me. Yeah, and, and happy new year, 2021 is finally here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, 2020 was it was a crazy year and it's good to get into 2021 for sure. And hopefully it's not as crazy as 2020, but we'll see. Yes, I know. And and little side note for something I did for 2020 for the for the New Year's Eve 2020, I went and watched the last sunset of 2020 from 2500 feet a mountain peak in in the Bay Area. <laughs> Sounds incredible. Good riddance to 2020. <laughs> 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 so, so to start with, can you tell us a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Absolutely. So I am an engineer by trade, and I've worked at a number of companies uh, here in Nebraska. And, um, you know, mo most of the companies where actually all of them where, you know, you have to go into an office. So my, my background is, is in engineering. And um, it was about uh, 20, 2015 when we came up with the idea for, for Exodus. Hmm. Cool. And, and as a, were you a developer or, um, and I, when, in your yes. previous job? Yeah. So actually I had a, a two engineering degrees, uh, computer science and then electrical engineering. So oh. like computer engineering, electrical engineering. So, but yes, I, uh, focused most of, mostly as a developer. Uh, there was a small stint where I focused a little bit more on the electrical engineering. Uh, but that was something I just did not enjoy. And I ended up really loving, uh, to write code. Yeah, no, I, it's interesting. I know I know people. I'm I'm a software developer by by trade, but there's a very unique skill set and, and type of person that wants to work on the EE part of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So so tell us about Exodus. What what your company is all about? Um, who your typical customer is? All those things. And and did you start Exodus in 2015? Yes. Yeah. It was, so the uh, yes, the idea for Exodus came in about the sp spring of 2015, and and it really originated from this notion of, of, so Bitcoin was becoming popular uh, back in you know, 2011, 2012. And there was a big uh, service called Mt. Gox where you could exchange your Bitcoin for, for dollars on that exchange. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, is that I believe it was 2012 or 2013 where hackers broke into Mt. Gox and they stole hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin, which has a value, a market value today in the, the tens of billions of dollars. And, and so we saw that a, as a problem. And uh, we knew that because people were used to using these, these exchanges and services, that we needed to create an alternative. And we needed to build software where people could manage their, the control themselves and they could do the exchange all within one application and never have to leave the comfort of that software. And so a uh, big picture, I mean, we see a, a kind of a, a macro trend right now where, where Bitcoin today is just, you know, all, another all time high of over $35,000 per one Bitcoin. And so we see so much interest in people starting to think about where should I put my money if it's not the stock market or if the dollar is starting to hit hyperinflation, where else should I put my money? And people are looking at these these digital assets as an alternative. And so right now we're seeing uh, record levels of, of, of interest of people downloading the software and starting to put money inside of uh, our Exodus software. Interesting, and, and do you trade all types of um, digital currencies? Um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the other common ones? Yes, so Exodus supports over, I think the actual count is a, it's maybe 111 oh. uh, cryptocurrencies. And so yes, the, the major ones, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others, uh, you can you can definitely trade right inside the software without ever having to leave the software. Oh, very cool. Um, so in 2015, when you started the company, were you uh, like, did you have a brick and mortar office or were you 100% remote from the beginning or how did that all happen? Yeah, so what's interesting, my, my co-founder lives in Omaha as well. And um, we knew that we would never be able to build like a world-class tech company in Nebraska, in Omaha. Mm -hmm. And we just thought like, well, if we want to get the world's best top talent, we have no other choice but to build a remote company. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was the start of it is we just wanted to get the best talent the fastest way possible. And we did something even different that a lot of remote companies don't do is we to hire the best talent and, and to get 
mission driven people, we pay 100% of the salaries in Bitcoin. And we've done that mm -hmm. since 2015. And so when we go to somebody, but it makes it very easy. I could go to somebody in, in, in Russia and meet them online or whatever, or write in code or whatever. I can say to them like, hey, here's what we're doing. Are you interested in, in helping us out? Yes, I am. Will you accept Bitcoin? Yes, I will. Okay, cool. Let's get started. And that's how easy it was for us to get moving quickly and scale really quickly in the early days. Wow, that's and and were most of the people open to that, or did you get a lot of people that said, "Nah, I'm not, I'm not going to take that chance." Yes. So in when when we had our our first, so we start we started in 2015 as just the idea. We raised money in the fall of 2016. And then we actually started hiring in early 2017. Mm. And so early 2017, we had uh, some people kind of give pushback. Uh, and those people were like, well, Exodus is just not for you then. And, mm. and but now today it's, we have, we've, when we hire today and, you know, people that are, aren't even interested in, in, in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. And then once we tell them about the mission, they get more excited, but they're still new to it. Mm -hmm. They're still very open to accepting Bitcoin. And I think it's really a testament that Bitcoin is, is, is on the precipice of going mainstream. Yeah. And, and just, to, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you could pay them in Bitcoin on a, like a Friday and they could literally turn around and sell it that day. Right. Yeah. And you know, what's really cool about that is um, it was the morning of December 31st. And I realized this just this, this uh, new year's Eve, I realized I'm like, our budget shows that we have more spending for some marketing costs. And mm. so I reached out to some podcasters that day to do a pre-buys for the year of 2021. Mm. And because by that point in time, you know, I couldn't do a wire transfer or anything like that, but mm. I could send Bitcoin if they were open to it. And, and, right. and three of them were open to accepting Bitcoin. And so it was real easy. I did ad buys for an entire year, 2021, and I paid these podcasters just in Bitcoin right away. And then there, you know, some are in the United States and, and one was in the UK. It was a very, very easy transaction. That's really interesting. And, and so your your company, how many, like how much of your staff is that in the United States and how much of it's, you know, spread throughout the world? Yeah, so we have uh, the, the last count is I think 73 people worldwide. Hmm. And uh, in the United States, I'm gonna. I'm doing a little bit of a guess here. I think it's around 20 or so in the United States. Wow! So you're almost you're like 25% U.S. and 75% uh, worldwide. And yes. are they are they full time employees or are they like in the U.S. case 1099s or how do you do that? Yeah, you know, in the in the U.S. they're they're full uh, employees. So so not 1099s, but they are full employees. And so we use um, what is called we use uh, Trinet. I don't know if you've heard of that oh, service, yeah. But, but yeah, so Trinet basically acts as the employer organization that does, you know, the, the healthcare and the, the tax withholdings and things like that. So a person's salaries actually it's denominated in dollars because if, you know, because Bitcoin is still, there's some mm -hmm. relative volatility here. And so it's easy to, to, to denominate the salary in dollars, but then we use Bitcoin as, as basically the medium of exchange to, to get them that salary. That's interesting. Um, so each week they get a, or each paycheck, they actually get a slightly different number of Bitcoin, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, and people, people, they always say they're like, they want it. They, I mean, and everybody want, they want it to go down a little bit before, <laughs> before payday, get paid and then payday ha have it go up. I mean, you know, it's, it's a really exciting kind of day for everybody. See, if you get enough employees, what you could have them do is they all sell the day before. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They move the markets. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's going to take a little while to move the markets, though. Interesting. So what do you think is the future of remote employment? You obviously are bought into it, but what do you think in general for, you know, the average company out there? Oh, I think the, the companies that we talk so pre this pandemic, you know, we, we talked to a number of companies in this space where we do a business deals with. And most companies pre pandemic were not remote. Mm -hmm. And I remember actually there is uh, one company I met with in, in January and they had a, an office in a New York sky rise and I was there at their office and um, you know, and, and they loved it and they, they thought it was great. I'm like, okay, you know, that's cool. And uh, I talked to their CEO from time to time and I just spoke to him a, a few weeks ago and, and, and he's like, you know what, JP, I don't think we have any employees in New York anymore. We are a hundred percent remote now. Mm -hmm. And so, 
I, that experience is an experience that I am, I'm witnessing all over across all the companies that, that we speak to. So what I think this means is that remote work is here to stay. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason it's, it's here to stay is because once people get a real comfortable remote setup, you got a, you got a good computer and you got a good comfortable chair and, and you got your, your, your headphones and you get some music going, like you can be really productive. And not only are you really productive, but it is a way for what I, what I would say is for the company to pay you as an individual the ultimate amount of respect. Because as an employer, I don't require that you come in at nine and you got to stay till 5 p.m. And I know you're not going to be productive during that entire time. It's like nobody cares, right? Start work at nine, stop at 11 a.m. It, it doesn't matter, right? It's like work when you want work what when it works best for you and your schedule and for your family and i think the future of remote is here and i think more and more companies are recognizing they don't have to pay these expensive rents uh in these big cities and they can just let their employees work remote and everybody's happy and more productive so it's definitely the future yeah no i agree i think actually one of the things i've talked to a few ceos that have said now that i don't have this rent that i have to pay every month i can hire like two or three more employees yeah we, it accelerates their growth. Absolutely. So yeah, I, I agree. I think there's still going to be some, I mean, I, there's still, I think it's going to go hybrid depending upon the company, like a company like yourself, because of the nature of what you do, I think you can do what you do remote forever. There's some companies that they do need to get people that come into something that is, and it might not be their office, but a co-working space or something like that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to depend. Like if it's an informational type of business or a software type business, there's really no reason you can't get, go remote. But if we're talking about like a, you know, like a dentist's office or a doctor's office, I mean, that becomes a little unavoidable. Um, but I think for most, most businesses, it's, it's yeah. here to stay. Yeah, sure. yeah. What I think, what, what I think COVID did was it took a trend that was starting to go up mm-hmm. and it just did this. Yes, it made it go. It just accelerated it. And the more we stay remote, which looks like it's gonna be another six months from the sounds of it, the more people are gonna be like, you know, it's gonna be actually something that people that employees say, hey, I went to work at least three days a week from home. Yeah, you agree. Yes. And, and you know what, uh, this that's one thing that's actually been a, uh, a, not an advantage for us is that before the pandemic, we could we could go to people that we were recruiting, we could say, hey, look, Mm-hmm. You work remote, you get up when you want, you start work when you want, and you stop work when you want. And people love that. It was a huge selling point for us. So mm-hmm. that's one thing now, now that everybody's doing it, it's, it's no longer a selling point as much. Yeah, but you could say you were the pioneer. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I'm going to start saying that. This and, is and true. You could say, and so we, we're, we are going to be the pioneer of the next big thing. Yes. Come on board. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, JP, I want to thank you for your time today. It's been great talking to you. Um, Happy New Year. Hopefully 2021 will be better than 2020. Um, And and in your industry, I think it will. I have a funny feeling. Uh, Cryptocurrencies are here to stay too. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So have a great day and have a great year. All right. Thank you for your time. You as well. All right. Bye.